We're going to solve the factorialize a number challenge from Free Code Camp's curriculum. Are you ready? Let's begin. The first thing that we see right here is a very concise sentence. Return the factorial of the provided integer. First we see return. So we know that we have to return a value. Then we see factorial. And then we also see that we are going to get an integer as input. We are going to get an integer when the function is called. Let's see a little bit more about factorial. What is factorial? If the integer that we are getting as input is represented with the letter n, a factorial is the product of all the positive integers, positive integers less than or equal to n. Let's see an example. If we have 5 factorial, which is the notation that we use in mathematics, we have 5 followed by an exclamation mark. That means that we have to multiply all the integers that are less than or equal to n. 5 factorial, we reach 5. The product of those integers is the value of the factorial, 120. There is something very important here. Note that we are starting from 1. We're not starting from 0. And why is that? If we multiply by zero, then the final product will be zero. So we have to start multiplying by one, which doesn't affect the multiplication. Here at the end, we also see that only integers greater than or equal to zero will be supplied to the function. That is giving us a very important clue about the input that we will get here, the values of num, the parameter. They will be integers greater than or equal to zero. But you may ask, why are we able to get zero as an input if we are not using zero in the product? Well, yes, that's right, we can get zero as an input, but only because we have a mathematical convention for that. By convention, factorial of zero is one. Okay, so that is something that we should be able to handle in our code as well. And now it's time to go to Visual Studio Code to implement our solution. Here we have our starter code. Let's copy and paste it in a file that I just created. Let's delete this return statement for now. And we're going to keep this test case just to be able to run the function and test it. The first thing that we're going to do is define a variable called factorial because we need to store that factorial somewhere. And that is the purpose of a variable. We have to store it because we are going to update it with a for loop. This will be my personal implementation of the function. There are many ways to implement this, of course, but in this case, to use a basic tool that you can use in JavaScript to practice loops, I'm going to use a for loop. We're going to define a for loop and that for loop is going to update the factorial on each iteration. How are we going to update it? Let's illustrate this with an example. If we have five factorial, that is equivalent to one times two times three times four times five. Okay. And that is equal to 120. Let me confirm this. Yes, 120. So let's see what we have to do with this for loop. First, let me explain why we are starting with the value one for factorial. We're going to multiply factorial by a number that is going to be updated on every iteration of the loop. If we start factorial from zero, then when we multiply by the new number, the result will always be zero. And that is exactly what we don't want. So we start from one because we can multiply by all the updated values and we will still get the correct result. It is a way to initialize the variable without affecting the result. Let's start defining the loop variable, the condition and how we're going to update that variable. To assign a descriptive name for the variable, I am going to name it current number. Right here we have number, which is the actual number for which we are calculating the factorial for. And we are also going to use the loop variable current number. This is going to be a number that we are going to update here, two, three, four, and five in this case, to multiply it by our current value of factorial. We're going to continue running the loop, running the for loop, while the current number is less than the number that we got as argument. In this example, this would be five, and the current number would be updated from one to two, to three, to four, and finally to five. Once we reach the value five, 
we will have a final iteration. And then when the value is six, the loop will stop and we don't have another iteration. That is the purpose of this condition. Only reaching the number that we want to calculate the factorial for. And finally, how do we want to update that current number? We want to increment it by one on every iteration. So we can have this pattern of incrementing by one per iteration. Now let's implement the body of the for loop. We're going to update the factorial variable. How are we going to update it? We're going to take the factorial, the current value of factorial, and we're going to multiply it by the current number. That way we will be incrementing this number by one and we will accumulate the result in factorial. It's like doing this. Let's say that initially the value of factorial is one, like we have right here. This will be one, and then we are going to multiply this by one again, so we're going to get one. Then for the second iteration, we are going to multiply this by two because current number will be updated to two. Then we are going to multiply the result, the factorial, which will be this by three and so on. I think you can see the pattern. Like we're taking the accumulated factorial so far and we are multiplying it by the new number that is incremented by one per iteration, like this. And finally, we get the value of factorial once the loop is completed. And after we have that final result, we have to return it. Return factorial. That is the logic of our function. And since we are returning the value, let's print it or show it in the terminal with console.log. Let's open up the terminal and let's run node factorialize a number.js. I see the value 120, which is exactly what we expected for five factorial. We can check this in the test cases. Factorialize of five should return 120. Now let's check factorialize of 10. This should return this value. Let's copy this as a reference. So we don't forget it, this right here. Now let's run our code and see the output. We see exactly the same output, the same value. And let's test factorialize of 20 now. This is a very large number. Let's copy this as a reference and we change this to 20. Now let's run our code and right here we can see the number. To see the changes, make sure that you save your file before running the command again. And finally, the moment of truth. Are we handling factorialize of zero correctly? This should return the value one. Let's see, let's see, let's see. We are getting one as the output and that is really awesome because our code is handling all the different test cases appropriately. Why are we getting one if we provide zero as the input? Well, let's see. We are actually implementing this in our code without actually knowing this. If we pass zero here as the number, the value of factorial is initially one. Since the value of num is zero, we're not going to get any iterations in the for loop. And we're just going to return the value of factorial directly. And that is why we are getting the value one. So that is correct. Yay, we solved the coding challenge if you're asking if there is a way to optimize this for loop, well, there is. We're actually performing one additional iteration than we absolutely have to because factorial is already initially one. In the first iteration, the value of factorial is one and the value of current number is one. So we are multiplying one by one, which is not necessary. If we update this to two, then we will be saving us that iteration. If we run the tests, we see that all the tests pass as well. This is one way of implementing factorialized with a for loop. I hope you like this video and I'll see you in the next coding challenge in this series of videos.